Welcome back, Ronin Renegades. I'm Lupine Fiasco. This is Daily Fab Gameplay, and today we are playing Fi against Reinar. For anyone who's new to the channel, welcome to the Resistance. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed, that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I'll talk through turn cycles as if I were taking them now, explaining my thoughts for the line that I would take, and comparing that to the line I did take at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future, to take down paper events like the upcoming Calling Los Angeles, and most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you would like to check out the list I'm playing here or try it for yourself on Talishar, the Fabry deck link is available in the video description below. While you're down there, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see Daily Fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. If you have a few extra dollars kicking around, the best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you Discord access at higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video, you'll get bonus DFG content every week, and there are even more benefits to come. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so for those who can't afford to patronize me, I truly appreciate it. Let's talk about our sideboard and about the Reinar game plan. Reinar has been picking up a bit of popularity lately, and that is horrifying to me. People always say that Phi is advantaged into Reinar. Reinar has a poor Phi matchup, but honestly, I have never felt that way. The balls to the wall, aggro, let's roll scabs every turn, Reinar does have a poor matchup into Phi. But when Reinar plays mid range, he has a much better time getting to block between 6 and 8 damage every turn cycle, then return 6 to 8 damage every turn cycle is very strong usually puts Reinar ahead of Phi on value and gives Reinar a life buffer that allows him to tank even a strong Art of War turn if it means returning a strong Blood Rush Bellow. Usually Reinar's hero text is completely meaningless against Phi and similar aggro decks, but once Reinar does put Phi low enough, Intimidate matters a lot, and with Phi having a high number of two blocks in his deck and even some non-blocks, the right Intimidate can really put Phi on the back foot. So I'm pretty scared going into Reinar. Our sideboard plan for the hero really does not involve changing anything. We are on Mask of the Pouncing Lynx as mid-range Reinar is happy to block with one or two cards from hand every turn cycle. We are never expecting to draw a card with Mask of Momentum and we are not disrupting Reinar's game plan by making him block. We are running Flamescale Furnace instead of Fiendal Spring Tunic as we do want that life total buffer, the extra two life from Flamescale Furnace, and the potential utility to fix a bad hand is always nice. We are not bringing in D-Reacts. We are not bringing in Command and Conquer. We want to out-aggro Reinar and go through his defenses rather than try to play a slower, more defensive game. So our real plan here is just go faster than he can, try to dodge those Blood Rush Bellows, and hope that his Intimidates are not so bad for us. Let's queue up and see how it all shakes out. We have lost the die roll and Reinar has chosen to go first. That's interesting to me. I know that he is trying to cheat out some sneaky damage with Intimidate, but I would still expect that Reinar wants to play defense on turn zero rather than send damage. Either way, I'm happy to be going second. The pack hunt does not screw up our ability to block, but it does screw up our first turn as we lose all three of our starters and draw into a hand without natural go again. We're gonna have to use Snapdragons here. It's unfortunate, I wish that we could save Snapdragons for later in the game when we are trying to set up a double finisher with Spreading Flames or Art of War, but our alternative for this turn is just awful. 
the most damage we can send without Snapdragon is four. Our best line without Snapdragon is going to be to send Blaze headlong, then pitch our Lava Vein Loyalty into Flamescale Furnace just to get it out of our hand, and Arsenal a Snatch. We IP ourselves, we are not presenting very much damage to Reinhardt, we are not threatening him in any way. So as painful as it is, we are going to need to snap this turn. We're going to lead with Lava Vein Loyalty. We would like Snatch to hit. There's no reason to lead with it. Reinhardt does have the armor and cards in hand to block. So we are going to open with our Lava Vein Loyalty, which is what we will be snapping. Between it and Blaze Headlong, there's no advantage to sending one or the other. The follow-up to Lava Vein Loyalty is Blaze Headlong. The follow-up to Blaze Headlong is Lava Vein Loyalty. So let's send the Lava Vein first. We'll just play out our hand. Blaze Headlong, Blaze Headlong, Phoenix Flame, Snatch. I'm not considering breaking Pouncing Links here. We can get more value out of it later on in the game. And arsenaling a Snatch without a Snapdragon Scalers is putting us in a position where the best thing we can do with a finisher is block with it, and we really don't want to be doing that with our finishers. We're either going to play the snatch, have it hit, and draw something for the arsenal, or we're going to force Reinar to block, and we will just draw into four cards, hopefully without multiple finishers clogging up our lines. Reinar covers up the snatch with five block between a card from hand, scabskin leathers, that's fine. That's about as good as we could expect to get from a snatch. We leave Reinar with a card in hand and a card in arsenal. Let's see what he can do with those. Swing big is quite good. We have a few lines available. We could block for eight and arsenal a lava burst or we could block for five with a Warmonger's Diplomacy, then send 11 on our turn. Between Brain of Cinderclaw, pitching two, Emberblade, and Phoenix Flame, then playing our Lava Burst. I like the aggressive line, uh, I usually do. Though there really is something to be said for setting up a five card hand with a Quicken, which we would get from blocking out Swing Big. Um, it's very possible that that's the best line. Reinar without Blood Rush Bellow is not very threatening. He doesn't have a lot of go again. He does have some powerful on hits like Command and Conquer and Send Packing. But as far as I know, Reinar isn't playing Pummel. So if we don't give him the opportunity to block with cards from hand, he may end up IPing himself. Considering that, I think blocking this for eight actually is the best call. Blue brand with Cinderclaw is a very unimpressive starter. We are more or less wasting our Shugo trigger as we get it on the Phoenix Flame rather than the Lava Burst. If this was a red brand with Cinderclaw, I think it's a no-brainer to block for five, uh, block for three, take five, then return thirteen. But if we're only returning eleven, I think we actually get higher value by defending here. That isn't the line I choose to take. If I was making this call now, I would just put 8 in front of the swing big and get my quicken, but instead we will play out the 11 damage line. Not looking to break pouncing links here. Again, I don't want to arsenal finishers without snapdragon scalers if I can avoid it. So I would prefer to just play out this hand. The fact that Ryanar is not blocking here makes me think he will be able to use a four card hand. So we aren't exactly punished for our decision to take the offensive line rather than the defensive one. But we can look at what we draw into to see if we would rather have that quicken. Yeah, 
it's hindsight, but Quicken with a Lava Burst in Arsenal would actually be insane here. We would get to lead with Snatch, follow with Blaze Headlong, pitch an Art of War into Emberblade, then finish up with Lava Burst, and Arsenal and Art of War. That would be a very strong turn. But of course, that's hindsight. We couldn't have known that. I think it's more that the three blue hand we had was very poor on offense, and without Snapdragon Scalers, the value of Quicken goes way up with our Lava Burst. So if I was making that call again, blocking would be correct, and in the future, we can pay attention to when our low value hands actually do get more value on defense than on offense. As it is, Reinar makes a few tokens and sends a uh, Alpha Rampage, intimidating away our Blaze Headlong and an Art of War. That is too bad. Um, I like blocking with Snatch here. I would have preferred to block with Snatch and Blaze Headlong, pitch an Art of War to Emberblade and Arsenal the other Art of War. What we will do instead is Blaze Headlong for four, then pitch one of our Art of Wars to Flamescale Furnace just to get it out of our hand. Here, unintentionally showing Reinar that we do have an Art of War, maybe we'll trick him. Maybe he'll think well, we're pitching an Art of War because we're bad players, not because we have two, and they are very poor in multiples. We do just want to get one out of our hand. It doesn't block, it doesn't pitch as well as a blue, Two Art of Wars generally don't play well together. You can have strong double Art of War hands, but they usually don't start with two Art of Wars in the same hand. It's more that you draw into a second one and your best line of play is to play it rather than keep it. The hand we draw into here is very strong. Ronin Renegade, uh, follow with Flame Call Awakening, pitching Salt the Wound, the floating resource pays for Art of War that banishes the flame call away, uh, the Phoenix Flame we found. Uh, e Strike just, you know, hanging out. Here, Reinar's Blood Rush Bellow turn is off to a strong start with Double Claw. We aren't going to block either of these, they are just damage, and we know that we can return a very strong hand. We also hold on to our E-Strike in case we need to block something like Command and Conquer. Um, unfortunately, we are going to have to give Furnace and Shuko to protect our Art of War. If we lose our Art of War, our hand is still fine. Ronin Renegade, Flame Call Awakening, uh, Attack with Phoenix Flame, pick up Phoenix Flame from our discard, bottom it to E-Strike to draw a card is still a fine line, but I like protecting the Art of War in Arsenal and I like preventing six damage from Command and Conquer. So here I think blocking with E-Strike, Furnace, and Shuko is correct. We are putting ourselves in a bad position with the Flesh Bag. We are really hoping that Reinar doesn't see our line with Run and Renegade Art of War and Flame Call Awakening. Reinar, of course, doesn't know it's in our hand, but considering how much we gave up to protect our arsenal, a good Reinar player would know that we're either protecting an Art of War or a Spreading Flames. Either one is much better with a larger hand. So I think the Fleshbag here is an easy decision. We'll play an Art of War in response to the Fleshbag. Um, the hand we draw into is not good. These two blues are not great. And in fact, uh, we banish the wrong blue. We Neither of these blues is good in our arsenal, but we would prefer to have a Lava Vein loyalty in arsenal at the end of the turn because it at least plays well with our other Draconic attacks. Nasty surprise, it's just kind of poop. We're going to break Pouncing Links here. Lava Burst for six is probably the most value we could expect from Pouncing Links for the rest of this game. Without Shuko, uh, we don't have that ability to get up to seven, and we're running out of time to put another Spreading Flames or Art of War turn together. So let's get our six value while we can, rather than waiting too long to the point where we have to block with Pouncing Links, and now it's only worth two. 
We'll play out the hand as best that we can. The fact that Reinhardt is keeping four cards here is very concerning to me. Um, getting some value for the Lava Burst is fine. We get two reds away from Reinhardt. We're really hoping that he returns with a Command and Conquer here. Um, instead, just another Swing Big. The hand that we have... Uh, Quicken here is not nearly as good as it would have been previously and is not nearly as easy to get. If we block this swing big for eight, we give up our entire hand. We are stuck with a nasty surprise in Arsenal because we don't want to burn our Quicken by playing it. So what we will do instead is block with Flame Call Awakening. Ronin Renegade, Ronin Renegade Snatch is 10 damage off of three cards. We get another two points of value by blocking Flame Call Awakening. If we kept this hand, we are looking at Ronin Renegade, pitch a Ronin Renegade to Flame Call Awakening, play a Phoenix Flame, pick up a Phoenix Flame, pitch it to Flame Skull Furnace to Ember Blade and Snatch. Uh, so that line altogether is. 3, 6, 7, 10, 14. That is lethal, so maybe that would have been the correct line to take. Uh, swing big here puts us to 9, as opposed to putting us to 11, and we return 4 less points of damage. So, I stand corrected. It would have been higher value to just take 8 from the swing big, rather than blocking with the flame call awakening. Unfortunately, we cannot clear Nasty Surprise out of Arsenal and play Snatch, so either way our Snatch is losing value, because if the Snatch hits, we are still just getting stuck with a card in hand. Reinhardt choosing to block would mean that even if we did send the 14 power line here, we are not presenting lethal. We are putting him to three, which can still be fine. We will see uh, what Reinar's response is on his turn. We draw up into a decent looking hand of cards. Rhino responds with a Blood Rush Bellow that banishes a Skull Crack to generate a second resource, compensating for the yellow he had to pitch to play the Blood Rush. Mandible Claw for five to go again. It's not something we need to block. Humble for six is not lethal. What we do need to now think about is how much do we respect Reckless Swing? We saw Reinar pitch a Reckless Swing earlier. The question is how many do we think he runs in his deck and how likely is he to draw into another copy in the next four cards? Can we win if we block with Flamescale Furnace and Mounting Anger? We get our blue, Lava Fame Loyalty back at the end of the turn. We would open our turn with Art of War because if we send Brain to Thunderclaw, then we cannot play Art of War. We attack with Brand, we pitch our blue to Ember Blade, we spend one resource to pick up our Phoenix Flame, which we attack with, we attack with Nasty Surprise, then we Arsenal Art of War. Altogether, we are sending nine points of damage. Reinar gives us one card to block that and stay alive, and then very likely kills us from three. So I do think... Also, we couldn't pick up our Phoenix Flame for Humble. We're not going to be able to stop this Humble one way or the other, so we wouldn't be able to work a Phoenix Flame in there. We're only looking at eight damage. Again, Reinar can block with one card. If we imagined that we were at three less life here from... Uh, if we were at two less life here from taking that full swing big, then we are still needing to answer this question of what are we blocking with? We're at four. We are now committed to giving 
flamescale furnace and mounting anger. We're thinking about do we block with brand with cinder claw as well. We have a arsenal of nasty surprise. Our hand is Laugh of Vain loyalty and art of war. There just really isn't much we can do with that hand either way. Right or wrong on our last turn to block the swing big. Uh, we're in a bad position. Here, I think we are in a bad enough position that we just block for one, go to one, and hope that Reinar doesn't have it. I think if we play around Reckless Swing, we put ourselves in a position where we can't win. We have two random cards off the top of our deck, two floating resources, and a nasty surprise in Arsenal, and we need to deal uh, seven points of damage plus however much Reinar chooses to block with. I think we have to go for it, unfortunately. We're in a tough, tough spot. So we open the Brand with Cinderclaw. I like Brand with Cinderclaw more than Mounting Anger as we are going to need to pay one to Art of War. We pitch our blue, we have two floating. If we open with Mounting Anger, then play Art of War, we only have one floating. We need to draw a more specific hand in order to work an Ember Blade into that turn as well. And if we are working an Ember Blade in, it means we probably drew poorly. Uh, whereas Brain with Cinderclaw and those two floating resources gives us much more ability to maneuver our turn based on what we draw. The fact that Reinar blocks for six with two non-attack actions makes me think that he has Reckless Swing and a six power attack. Um, the game is over. Playing Art of War here is incorrect. We should just hold it, but... Uh, very unlikely that Reinar is just bluffing the Reckless Swing, so we take two damage and die. Overall, that was not a great game, honestly. Uh, we presented much less value per turn than Reinar did. This is a big reason why I thought at the start of Heavy Hitters, Phi would be a bad choice, and why I continue to think that Phi is going to be a tough choice to play in Los Angeles. Scowling Flashback is the best defensive piece of equipment in the game. Brute blocks much better than Ninja does. Brute has stronger two-card hands than Ninja does. And Brute generally gets more value per turn cycle than Ninja does. Than Phi does. Katsu is a different animal. We put ourselves in a position where we need to draw very well in order to eke out more value than Brute does. We didn't do that in this game. We could have played better, we could have blocked out that first swing big and put ourselves into a position where two Art of Wars and two Reds without go again does not just ruin our turn cycle. Let's give ourselves credit that opening turn one hand of four red attacks with no natural go again was terrible. Losing Snapdragons turn one is so bad for us, but... I don't feel that Reinar drew particularly well. I think he just did normal Reinar stuff. And that's a tough one for Phi to deal with. But we can certainly play better. We can work on it in the future. And that's what this channel is all about. So I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you learned something. If so, be sure to head jab that like button. My comments are always open for questions or feedback. Again, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is free. It's the best way to help me. But no matter what you do, catch me tomorrow for more daily fab gameplay. And until then, take care.